let's go to the bottom of the second page and let's manually look at this. I know we, you know, we saw the graphing calculator and how that, um, how that graphed the function. What I want to do is to graph the y equals sine t by hand, and we want to graph it from zero to two pi. And so I would mark off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So out eight here, I'm going to call this two pi and halfway would be pi and half of that would be pi over 2 and then between halfway between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2 and we can we can eyeball um, we can eyeball the rest and so what I want is I, I know that you can evaluate the sign of the special angles here and you can um, you could evaluate anything beyond the first quadrant using reference angles, but right now we just want to evaluate these using decimal values in our calculator. So for the, the sine of pi over 4, we would just go in, we, we are already in radian mode, but just confirm, double check, we want to be in radians. And I just want to find the, so I'll quit out of here, and we'll just do the sine of pi divided by 4. Now you already know the answer to that is a square root of 2 over 2, but if we hit enter we'll get the decimal value. I'm just going to round these values to the nearest tenth. Um, we're going we're gonna to roughly you know, sketch a graph by hand. And then just as we did with exponential and logarithmic functions, we focused on three special points. We're going to focus on five special points when we graph uh, the trigonometric functions. So I'm going to put 0.7 in right here and then what I'd like you to do is fill in the rest of this table pause the video fill in the table and then we'll come back and we'll graph this together I'm gonna graph uh, these ordered pairs and I'm really just gonna I'm gonna focus on 0 pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, and then we'll talk about the other values. Um, so the sine of 0 is 0, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, the sine of pi is 0, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, the sine of 2 pi is 0. And if we plotted the, you know, at pi over 4 we're at about 0 0.7, at pi over 3 we're at 0 0.9, and so we can see those values will fill in and give us a nice smooth curve. Okay, it's not you, you can see as you approach pi over two and as you leave pi over two, the values here to the left and right are point nine, so we're just underneath it. It's not a sharp pointy curve. It is a um, it's a nice smooth curve. And this is just one cycle of uh, of sine. And you can see that it has x intercepts at the beginning, halfway and at the end. Um, the max is 1, the min is negative 1, and, and we'll categorize this in a minute. So we talked about the fact this is a periodic function, and um, a cycle of a periodic function is a portion of the graph of the function um, from one point on the graph to a point at which the graph starts repeating itself. So basically the cycle is the portion that repeats, and the period is the number of degrees or radians taken to complete one cycle. And so the, the, the period for sine is 2 pi, right? 2 pi gave us one rotation and then the graph started repeating itself. So I'd like you to, uh, to go in and let's, instead of graphing the sine, let's graph the cosine curve on your graphing calculator. So the unit circle is still going to have the cosine as its x-coordinate and the sine as its y-coordinate. And it's the second graph that we're going to change from sine of t. So I've gone in and I've changed the, the sine t to cosine t. So we're going to still have the unit circle and then we'll also, now we'll have the graph of cosine. I'm going to go back into the window 
and I first just want to do one uh, rotation so I'm gonna make my uh, T max 2 pi and I'm gonna go in and make the X max 2 pi also so we're getting one rotation I'm gonna keep the T step at point one I, I think we can graph this um, quickly and that would be okay so you'll notice now where we're going we're rotating around the unit circle And to the right is the graph of the sine of, of the cosine of each angle. And right here we're at three pi over two, and the cosine of three pi over two is zero. And as we go around one rotation, we get one cycle of cosine. And let's, let's look at some of those sine rules. We know that cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrants here and so on the on this x-axis from 0 to pi over 2 the graph is above the x-axis and from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi the graph is above the x-axis because the cosine is positive in those two quadrants now in quadrants 2 and 3 that means we're going from pi over 2 all the way to 3 pi over 2 that would correspond to this piece of the graph where cosine is negative the graph should be below the x-axis. Let's go in and change the window so we can get a better idea of what one cycle looks like and let's go to 4 pi for my t max and also for my x max. And we'll graph. So again, we're making one, we're going to start with the one rotation. While we're rotating, the calculator is calculating the values for the cosine of each angle. Now the cosine of pi, pi would be right here, is negative one. Cosine of three pi over two is zero. As we come back up to the cosine of now two pi, cosine of two pi is one. Now we're going to rotate around the circle again and we're going to get the same exact shape. We're going to get one more cycle. So we can see from 0 to 2 pi is one cycle, that would be one rotation. And then from 2 pi to 4 pi, that's another cycle, that would be a second rotation. So let's, let's slide down and graph, um, graph the cosine curve. So the cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2, because you're, you're on the y-axis there, so your x-coordinate would be 0. The, cosine of pi is negative 1, the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and the cosine of 2 pi is 1. So I'll mark off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. When you're graphing sine and cosine functions, it's nice to, it, it's, the best case scenario is if you divide it up into eight, 8 little sections, but 4 will also work because we do half of 2 pi, which would give us pi, so at 4 over, and then at half of pi, that would be pi over 2. So here we have 1 pi over 2, pi would be 2 pi over 2, then 2 slots over would be 3 pi over 2, and then 2 more spaces over would be 4 pi over 2, which was equal to 2 pi. So we'll put our 3 pi over 2 in. And then on this one, you could make the first mark right here equal to 1. I'm going to make the second one equal to 1, just so that it's spread out a little bit and it's a little easy to graph. So we'll make this equal to 1, and this down here will be equal to negative 1. So I'm going to plot my points. The, the cosine of 0, which is right here, cosine of 0 is 1. So I plot a point. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The cosine of pi, negative 1. The cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. 
and the cosine of 2 pi is 1. And so I connect these with a nice smooth curve. Okay. Um, we already saw how we graphed it on the computer and how the sine curve is graphed. That we could we could plot a whole bunch more points in here and see that it's a nice smooth curve. But we're going to focus on these five ordered pairs to help you when you graph a a sine or a cosine function. Focus on the value. No, number eleven here says so state the period for f of x equals cosine x or f of t equals cosine t. And we already saw that uh, cosine repeated one cycle or completes one cycle over two pi radians. Uh, all right. What I want to do now is just kind of um, kind of summarize and compare the sine and cosine functions. Your job eventually is going to be to graph them to graph them by hand. Um, but let's look at some um, kind of compare the two at the same time. When we look at the sine function, and in this time I I graphed from negative two pi all the way to two pi. So we get one cycle from negative 2 pi to 0 and another cycle from 0 to 2 pi. Same thing with cosine. We've gone from negative 2 pi out to 2 pi. We get one cycle and then another cycle. So you can see that what we consider one cycle of sine looks like this and what we consider one cycle of cosine looks like this. But actually the sine and cosine curves are really the same exact shape. They're just shifted. They're actually off by pi over 2. Because anywhere in a cosine graph, I could find the shape of a sine graph. Um, say if I start right here, and I just darken this in, can you see this is a, that would be a sine curve. So sine and cosine are very similar. Um, but where if you think of 0 as your starting point, uh, the sine function, right? The sine of zero is zero, and the sine, uh, the cosine of zero is one. All right. So the maximum value that this function takes on, the maximum y value, is one, and the maximum value for cosine is also one. The minimum value, meaning the minimum y value, for both of them is negative one. The, the, the y-intercept for sine is 0 or 0, 0. And the y-intercept for cosine would be 1 or we say 0, 1, right? A y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. Okay. So these are actually, um, the x-intercepts are actually multiples of pi. And for the x-intercepts for cosine, they actually occur, this value right here is uh, negative 3 pi over 2, this value right here is negative pi over 2, this is positive pi over 2, and this is positive 3 pi over 2. Remember that 2 pi is approximately equal to 6.28, pi is approximately equal to 3.14. When I graphed these, there were decimal values um, on the software that I used. So the x-intercepts for cosine negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. And again, these are just the x-intercepts that occur from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Remember, we'll keep getting multiples of those as we rotate around the unit circle. So what we have here are actually odd multiples of pi over 2. But again, we'll come back and talk about that uh, a little bit later. The domain for both of these functions is all real numbers. We're allowed to take the sine and cosine of any angle, negative or positive. The range, well, we have the smallest and the largest uh, y value, so the range is negative 1 to 1 for both. And the period for both is 2 pi. When we ask questions, uh, in what ways are the graphs the same? And we talked about the fact that um, you know the shape, the shape of the graph is the same, and the domain and ranges are the same. Right. And in what ways are they different? Well, they have um, different x-intercepts. Right. The shape is exactly the same, but their x-intercepts are different. You know, and their y-intercepts are different also. So in the next video, I want to show you how to graph a basic sine and cosine function rather quickly. Um, using the information that you've got here, but in a, in a really efficient way.